Roland Emmerich's groundbreaking film, Stargate, an alien race travels across the universe, gathering slaves for a mining colony on a faraway planet. For many centuries, people have wondered if Earth really was visited by extraterrestrials. And today, there are those who believe they have proof that aliens did, in fact, come here. One such believer has traveled around the world, gathering evidence of alien visitation. And his findings are remarkable. This is his story. Von Daniken was born in Switzerland in 1935. Educated at exclusive private schools, he had the chance to meet students from all over the world. Curious and inquisitive, he developed a desire to travel to the world's most mysterious locations. I was educated in a boarding school, and one of the friends in my class was an Egyptian. He had a rich father. At that time, this was still King Farouk's time. And together with him, I went for the first time to Egypt. We took a ship from Marseille, arrived in Alexandria. There, uh, some servant of his father picked us up, and I saw the first time the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid is 450 feet high and 756 feet long on each side. Incredibly, no one side is more than eight inches longer or shorter than any other. It is also perfectly oriented to the four points of the compass. Van Daniken wondered how such an engineering marvel was possible in ancient times. You are just impressed. You say, how is such a thing possible? Van Daniken's fascination with the pyramid inspired him to learn as much as he could about the world's most mysterious sites. For years, he studied ancient history primitive art, and poured through the world's spiritual texts. But as his research progressed, he started to notice signs and images that seemed unusual, strange. Carvings of beings wearing what appear to be astronauts' helmets. Ancient representations of mysterious flying devices from China and India. Van Daniken wondered, were these images of ancient astronauts who came to Earth? And if so, why? In 1966, Van Daniken published his groundbreaking book, Chariots of the Gods, in which he claimed that we are surrounded by evidence of alien visitation. To begin, Van Daniken shunned the belief that the Pharaoh Cheops built the Great Pyramid. According to Egyptian historians, the Great Pyramid was constructed before the Great Flood. The gods descended from the sky. The most intelligent of our forefather, according to ancient Egypt, was called Zaurit. These teachers from heaven taught him how to write. They dictated him books. Then they told him that the Great Flood would come, destroy mankind. Now Zaurit impatiently asked that they would permit him to construct a building because he wanted to put in this building all his books. So Saurit constructed the pyramid. He made many small rooms in there. And in these rooms, he put his books. And by the end, he made the pyramid waterproof by covering all the stones with another layer of stone. So this is Arabian history. history. In our Western world, nobody believes a word of it. Researcher Giorgio Soukalos agrees that the pyramid was not built by Cheops. The greatest accepted theory today is that Cheops built the pyramid in 22 years. If I were a tyrant, which Cheops is said to have been, wouldn't it be obvious that every square inch of the insides and the outside of the pyramid would, would have my name plastered all over it. There are no inscriptions, no hieroglyphs inside the Great Pyramids. All the walls are blank. Inspired by his findings in Egypt, 
Van Daniken traveled to Mexico, where he discovered that many of the ancient ruins are also pyramids. The first time I was in Mexico, I was of course in Teotihuacan, which is just about 50 kilometers away from Mexico City. And it is an incredible, impressive archaeological site with huge pyramids. When Van Daniken studied the arrangement of the ancient buildings at Teotihuacan, he made an extraordinary discovery. All the buildings on the main street of Teotihuacan are not standing there in coincidence, but they are a model of our solar system. It really turns out that Teotihuacan is a small scale of our solar system, including the planets Uranus, Saturn and Pluto. But Pluto was not discovered until 1930. How did the ancient architects of Teotihuacan know of its precise location within our solar system? Van Daniken believes that aliens incorporated the astronomical information into the sites so that we would have to question how it was done. And that's exactly what they wanted to do. They do it in ruins, they do it in old traditions, in holy books, so that the future generation, thousands of years in the future, must come up with the question, have we been visited by beings from outer space? And that's the point where we are. All of these monuments, the pyramids at Giza, Stonehenge, Teotihuacan in Mexico, all of these monuments are signs. They are messages. Messages for a generation who has eyes to see and a brain to think and who has the knowledge to decipher the message. In the Mexican city of Palenque, Van Donegan discovered an image that to his eyes offered even greater proof of alien visitation. Discovered in 1949, this ancient tomb is covered by a large stone tablet. The engraving on the cover seems to show a figure seated inside an unusual kind of flying device, wearing what some people interpret as an astronaut's helmet. On this tombstone, you have an incredible engraving. There is a man sitting, bending forward, almost like a, a motorizing cyclist. He uses his hands to manipulate control. Directly on his nose is something like a mask. Were our ancestors showing us a device that alien visitors used for their journey to Earth? Flying machines similar to those we have invented thousands of years later? As we begin our exploration of space, are we repeating an event that already occurred thousands of years ago? But perhaps the most thought-provoking of the world's ancient sites are the Nazca Lines of Peru. Ground carvings of such enormous scale that they can only be seen from above. We have been flying with a small aircraft over Nazca and it is extremely impressive. First you have figures, figures of fishes, monkeys, apes, spiders and these things, but of such overdimensional size that you can see them, you can see them only from the air. The second thing you see are lines, but the longest of it is 23 kilometers long. How did these lines get here? Van Daniken believes that the oldest lines were created by spaceships as they glided over the desolate landscape. Of course, their flying machines left traces behind, like a wagon would leave traces uh, from its wheels behind. Van Daniken believes that the early Peruvians then reinforced the lines so that future generations would know of their ancestors' visitors. But what about the mysterious animals? What was their purpose? Later on, a priest may have a good idea. He may suggest, well, why are these beings not returning? Why are they not coming down? Well, we have to show them that we are here, that we have sacrifices for them. And now in the midst of the lines, they start to make gigantic figures. Why would an ancient civilization create carvings that could only be seen from miles above? Van Daniken is convinced that extraterrestrials flying over the Andes Mountains were the first to admire these works of ancient art. From the world's largest pyramids to the smallest ancient carvings, Van Daniken believes the message is clear. 
aliens were once among us. There is an old promise given by the extraterrestrials to our forefathers that in the far future they will return. And I'm absolutely confident they will return. All of these ancient accounts, all of them promise that these extraterrestrials will come back. And they will. The only question is when. Will they come back tomorrow? Will they come back in 100 years? Nobody knows. The universe is filled with an incalculable number of stars, each functioning as a sun with its own set of revolving planets. In this infinite universe, can we really be certain that Earth is the only planet ever to have sent a mission into space? In Stargate, the aliens are evil, turning human beings into slaves. But Von Donniken's theory is that our extraterrestrial guests were probably very different. If there really was a Stargate, he believes that they came instead to teach us and even help create our planet's greatest wonders. Music